fulfillment of life is music has been such a fulfillment. I've got a wife that is one of the greatest instrumentalists the world ever saw. I stopped her. But at the same time, she is part of my existence. On top of that, I have a son who is so successful in it. What else is there in life? È molto facile di parlare molto bene di di Luis perché ha una voce fantastica, meravigliosa, bellissima e in più ha il modo di cantare italiano e, e l'entusiasmo ha tutto per me ha tutto. One thing that he has done particularly well out of his career is the son Gino, who is a great talent. A great voice, great personality too. I want to be recognized as an opera singer by my uniqueness, not similar to Caruso or Louis Quilico or, or other great singers. I try to bring myself out into the voice because I figure if I'm unique enough as a person, then I, it will show in my voice because I feel the voice is a direct contact to your soul. My mother loves life and loves to live. She's been the, the more ambitious one of the family. We call her the backbone of the family because she's the one who's always got things rolling. I love the music, not just for the glory. I'll play till I die and he'll sing till he dies. That's our life. We can't live without music. to be in music. I remember the first day, or maybe the second day in school, I remember this gentleman walking in, all dressed up with a very special suit, and asked us to, who wants to be in the chorus, and I lift my hand. I remember uh, we were 75, little boy, and sometimes I used to feel like an angel at that moment. You know, you feel that uh, there's a wave around you that grabs you, that makes you feel good. And the music used to transport me. Maybe from then on, I always felt to sing in church, it was, first of all, my way to thank God. My life was to sing and sing. But I never thought that I could make a living out of it. When I go to Montreal, sometimes I even just pass in front of the church, and it's very romantic for me. It's very close to my heart. It's part of my existence. When he was very young, he used to wake up singing in the morning. And he come um, all day and go, you know, sing and sing. And that night, you know, fall back to sleep like that. I'm the one who brought the music in the house. And my family did not have much imagination. My father and my mother, they were good living people. There was food, no problem. But food for thought was not there too. Louis did start to work at 13 years old for his father. And every night up to 11, he was in the business with his father and Saturday and Sunday. I was happy because I was working for my father, but uh, my father never looked at the other s side of the coin. He looked that he wanted to get everything, but never to give back. I loved him, I respected him. I don't think there is a... a a son that could have maybe respect him like I did. I won my first contest before I met Lena. I remember that night when I sang. The whole thing was there, the, the glamorous side of it and beauty of it and everything. And the challenge of it, I think I had the whole taste all at once. He still didn't believe in himself, of course. And so he didn't study as hard as he should have. And. Um, then we met. <laughs> I had passing on St. Catherine Street in Montreal, in front of a music store, a shamble. In the window, there was a display of Lena's picture. And uh, she had done a concert two days before. 
I fell in love with the picture before I fell in love with the lady. She was a beauty. Boom. There, there it was. Uh, my heart started boom, boom, boom. I really fell in love with her when he came for my birthday. It was such a bad storm. And all of a sudden, he was a different man. Oh, that is... You know, it's crazy, but all girls, I suppose, they believe in their charming armor, you know, coming I have a hole <laughs> on the white horse. And that's the way I saw her. Honest to God, I really did. When I first met Lena, she was an established concert pianist, and she had started to work around the age of five years old. My sister used to take piano lessons. She was older. I would always run at the piano the minute she would be out of the living room and start playing all her pieces. and. I would do them all by, by ear because I didn't know music. And the teacher would come and I'd sit there and watch her and I'd say, I can play it. <laughs> Finally, she made me play one day. And after a year and a half, she made me compete for the school. And I won scholarship. I was considered a child prodigy. At 12 years old, I won the gold medal of France, and then they were getting me ready for a world tour. And then, of course, the war stopped, and then I started to teach. And then I was getting ready for the Chopin competition, and then I met my husband. <laughs> here you come to the most uh, sophisticated instrument list, and here come the mechanic with a screwdriver and a hammer. And I said, who am I to, to impose this on that? great person. She said something very funny in those years. She says, you know, you are a diamond, but you are such a dirty diamond. It's going to take me a lot of long years, many years before I can polish it. But I'm going to do it. By God, I'm going to do it. And because when I met my wife, I didn't know nothing. I don't think he would have pursued if he wouldn't have met another woman like me who uh, believed in him, well, you know, I'm, my life is music. It's only when I met Lena that the whole thing started to really roll, but I was scared of it. His father wouldn't help him. He had the money, but he would not help him to go to Europe, study. And that's where I said to Louis, if I was a man, I wouldn't worry. I work my way. I'll do anything. You can sleep anywhere. You're a man. <laughs> well, that's the way it started. I decided to go to Italy. And I think, in a certain way, it was like the first vacation I have in my life. Let's enjoy it. And at the same time, there's some vocal teacher. Let's take some lesson. And that was about it. I wasn't very serious about it. I don't know. I. I was not believing in myself. I said, uh, let me try anyway. But Lena had the courage. I did not have that courage. I really quit three times. And each time I quit, my wife, she, she looked at me, she says, over my dead body. She says, I don't want to live with a man that I could not understand. I don't know nothing about business. I understand about music. Many times, I even had to lie and say, yes, he's done that opera, and he hadn't done it. <laughs> Otherwise, he wouldn't have got the booking. <laughs> then, did I have to work hard to make it believable? I'm very proud of him for what he has achieved. It wasn't easy. The man is very high-cultured, and he doesn't have a university degree, but is worth anyone that has a university degree. He read a lot, he studied tremendous, he's a self-taught in a way, but a great satisfaction. So that's quite an achievement. I'm very proud of this man. <laughs> One of my great experiences in my life was when I won the Met audition. Lena was pregnant of Gino, and it was such a nerve-wracking day. And I came at the door of the stage, and I stopped dead. And I looked at that stage and said, Louis, what are you doing here? I have no right to step on that stage. I said, you just realize 
Caruso put his feet on the stage. And me, I'm supposed to put my feet on top of that. Finally, they call and I have to go. And I'm the winner. I tell you, if they would hit me with a sledgehammer over the head, they couldn't do worse. Louis won the Metropolitan Audition of the Year. He won the first prize. So I'm very proud to say, but Mr. Bing stopped him for 12 years before he was able to be at the Met. For at least four or five years, every year, Mr. Rudolph Bing would call me and to pass an audition on the stage at the Met, and nothing would come out of it. And finally, I got very fed up out of it. And uh, I refused it. And uh, he came up with a statement that I was very arrogant and as long as he was going to be uh, the general manager of the Metropolitan, never I would sing at the Met. But at the same time, in those years, I was singing all over the world. And I never really, at that point, missed the Met. Louis is very special, and this was one of those God-given uh, instruments. Plus, there is Louis' enormous humanity and warmth. This man is like a flood of humanity, as you get it. Well, I think, first of all, one of the unique baritone, real Verdi baritone voice who still exists around. Death would have hung me! <laughs> The year of profession is something that not many people can show with all great success, I think, in any kind of role. Louis was practically one of the first ones to bring more acting in the singing. In opera, in those years, it was very static. And Louis was really living the part so much. I think he has brought a lot to the opera. Louis is being who he is, which means that with his honesty, he's an incredibly sincere person. He cannot do things on the stage that he doesn't believe. And therefore, he brought truth in his singing from beginning. From the time I know Louis, Louis was a stage director's preferred artist because to him, the character meant a lot. I've seen him break himself up on stage because he gets so involved that tears come in his eyes. I've managed very well to be able to keep always the family, even when I was singing. He was her great father, even though he traveled a lot. When he came back home, he was with us, and it was a beautiful thing. We traveled all over the world together with my mother, my father, my sister and I, and my grandmother. And here we had this car stacked up, and off we went, singing songs to the whole family. It was very close, very warm feeling and my childhood for me is like a big picture a big holiday it is sad that uh, louis father could not be the father that louis was to gino everybody used to tell him your son is very good and you know he didn't believe much in him you know he died when i was uh, i had over 25 years career i don't think he came and see me perform more than 10 times and it used to hurt me because you know you like to have your father to believe in you. It used to hurt him, but it never stopped him. And it, it took longer for him to believe in himself. To act somebody else, that's easy. To do your own self, it's practically impossible. Rigoletto, Iago, Tosca, Scarpia. All these rules are becoming so incredible for that reason, because the challenge of doing the opposite of what you are, there's something magic about the theater. The moment you walk on that stage, it's time for you. It's like being completely transported in another world. Another great of my wonderful experience was to do uh, Othello in Montreal at Expo. Uh, the reason why I say it was a marvelous experience because it was really one of the very first major role I ever done on the stage in Montreal. And I was very proud about it. When he came back and sang at the Expo with John Vickers and Stratus and they did the Othello. 
That's when his father really went on his knees to his son and apologized. But until then, I don't think he was convinced. He was interviewed, and all of a sudden, the interviewer said, Mr. Quirico, would you tell us, were you for your son's career or against it? And finally, he said, I was very much against my son to sing. But today, I'm very happy he sang. And I'm very happy what he has done and what he has achieved. And when I heard this, with big tears in my eyes, I looked at my father and I said, you know, Dad, you became a man when you said this. I said, I wanted to hear this from him for many, many years, but he couldn't get it. For 1990, Mazda takes aim at small thinking. Introducing the all-new Mazda Sports Weekend. It hasn't always been easy for Louis. He really had to work very hard. He always had a bit of problem with pronunciation. He's a slow reader. Slow in learning, but once he knew something, it was very solid. It was very surprising. And the pitch was always perfect. The learning process sometimes was very difficult because she was so fast, but she had a tremendous patience. Or sometimes she would scream because I could not understand. I would take that book and just throw it on the wall. She would jump and she would say, never do this to me again. When my mother sits at the piano, everybody shuts up. She's the boss. But when it comes to family life, he's the boss. They balance each other out. They respect each other. Not to piano, otherwise you don't make it the crescendo. It's not going to work. I'm really lost today. Huh? Not because we're working. Yeah. When Louis performs, he emphasizes very much on the expression of the word and feel what he says. It's not just words, it's to feel and to live it. And this is what makes him extra special. The voice, you don't see it. You cannot touch it. You can only simply feel it. You go according to feelings. I never figured this as a business. It's a way of life. It's the most secret thing there is on earth. It is the international language. It's the only thing where people are all equal. I've learned to give. The more you give, the more you receive. And I. I don't, I don't know. For me, it was very impo important to give. Lui, posso vedere e sentire fino 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 quando io non canto, ma quando canto è finito. Ma c'è una grande una grande collaborazione. E lui è sempre presente ed è sempre con con i colleghi. È fantastico. È veramente un collega caro, senza problemi, sempre sorridente, sempre pronto a venire incontro di qualunque sia difficoltà scenica. Luis ha una umanità e una collaborazione con gli altri, una simpatia e questo sorriso bello sempre verso tutti apre il cuore, veramente è una gioia. I love you guys. We love you too, Mr. Wilco. Everyone loves Louis, whether it's his colleagues, which is the stage hand, they they all love him. He's something out of this world. I mean, uh, one of his kind. You think of uh, Louis, you think of Rigoletto. Louis belongs to Verdi, Verdi belongs to Louis. It's a, they, it's a very good marriage. I still think Louis is the greatest Rigoletto in the world. When you hear Louis Critico, you really feel that there is a soul there. And that is the most important thing. That is what keeps him in a high level between the baritone all the time. The aria that I think has been most identification with my whole entire life, I think, was Rigoletto. 
Portigiani, I won all my audition, all my contests with that aria. It's the opera that I've done the most. It's the opera that I have been identified the most with. The pathos that Louis puts in Rigoletto, I don't think I've heard anyone else in the past 20 years give me that. People were asking, aren't you tired of Rigoletto? You never can be tired, I would say. Listen, if I love a person, I wish only one thing, that he could do Rigoletto once in their life. I think that my father is the greatest Rigoletto of this century. Today, I'm yet to see another Rigoletto that can sing the way he does, even though he is now slowly giving up the role. I think it was three or four years ago, I said, I don't want to sing it no more. Because all of a sudden, it was possessing me. I was not possessing Rigoletto. For instance, I'll do a Rigoletto, and the first thing I know, I will start to cry like a, uh, like a little child. And that is losing control of it, and that's very dangerous. I am very powerful in Rigoletto. I'm uh, one of the most powerful Rigoletto you can meet in this earth. I made sure at the beginning of my career to bring my family with me. But one thing I never thought in those years, that Gino would become an opera singer. At the age of about 15, 16, I had that dream that oh, I'd like to be a pop star. Uh, this life looked so splashy and fun and uh, these were my crazy days when I had long hair down on my shoulders and I was causing a lot of trouble in the family. Gino would take off and he wanted to leave home and I would run after him and the only thing Gino would say is I can't be like him, I can't be as perfect as he is and it was very difficult to convince Gino that he didn't have to be like his father, he had to be himself. My parents were very uh, understanding with all these things. I really wanted to do things on my own and I had a very strong character and I was always the leader of the pack. <laughs> it was a complete surprise the day that Gino said he wanted to sing. And that was a very big surprise for Louis. My wife said to me, he says, darling, your son has something to ask you, but please promise me one thing, you will not laugh. Yeah. <laughs> it's embarrassing, because you feel very awkward, especially in front of a, an opera singer <laughs> who knows what he's doing. In the voice, there was just one single note. And I said to myself, and I said to Lena right away, I said, Lena, we have a winner there, and we have a winner. <laughs> I didn't necessarily want him to go into music. No, I didn't, actually. I wanted him to be a doctor. You see, at eight years old, I would spend four, five, six hours at the piano, and my school would be second. So if my children didn't want to do full-time music, then they would not be artists. That was my belief, but I was wrong about that. The first time I sang in the opera chorus, first of all, I remember the feeling of being observed by everybody because everybody said this is Louis Pilipo's son. The feeling I remember the most from that experience was being on that stage completely in awe, completely overwhelmed by the 4,000 people that were looking and singing with everything I had, with pure uh, satisfaction and feeling totally alone, as though I was alone. And I remember wanting very much more, much more. Gino has become, for me, maybe one of the most interesting people I had, and I was very tough on Gino, and that is the thing that is rewarding. He accepted it. He just studied privately with us, and then he passed audition for the UFT. And then he decided to do just the opera school. And then he was married already, so young, you know.
after just one year of the divorce. He did tremendously. They didn't even want to give him the degree at the opera school because they said he was too young. They did give him finally. So it was from 20 to 23. Rich, rich, full of work, 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 work. It was strictly opera, opera, opera. This is all I did. This is all I cared about. This is all I wanted. It was in 1978 that uh, Gino made his debut with the Canadian television in the media. It was a role that Gino was too young to do. And he did a very nice job, but you felt that the voice was too young for the role. I love the challenge. I was excited by it all, and I wanted to be the best. And so I kept absorbing. It was like a sponge. In 1980, I made my debut at the Paris Opera. It's the first place I saw my father realize what opera was all about. And I used to love to clap. I loved also the game of being out there with all these people cheering my father, clapping myself and screaming as loud as I could, bravo. When I made my debut, I walked out of the airplane. I took my suitcases. I got into a taxi. I said, Paris Opera. For me, it represents opera and my father because it's where I first saw him sing. I went to see Gino Medis debut at the Paris Opera. It was a wonderful thing. I said, Gino, I've learned something tonight. He said, what? I says, I've learned that you should have been born before me. You would have taught me how to do a act in the theater because I don't act like this at all. <laughs> my career is much larger in Europe and because I devoted more time to Europe. A lui il palcoscenico proprio è la sua casa. Canta con facilità, con gioia ed è, ed è libero di, di, di tante cose che impediscono ai cantanti spesso e volte di esprimere. Buon carattere e bravo, bravo cantante, bravo attore. I'm not content with myself ever quite. I think I've been content with myself maybe twice in my life uh, out of a performance and felt I couldn't do better. Gino is a workaholic and it's true. He's a perfectionist. I don't learn too easily. I just work hard because I want to learn. Unfortunately, I feel I never have enough time and enough energy. If I didn't have this competition with myself, I think I'd be very bored because things are going well for me. E Gino, anche lui, ha moltissime qualità come suo padre e, ed è fantastico, è un grande attore, oltre ad avere una facilità per il canto e sulla scena veramente è un, ha una personalità molto grande e molto molto bravo. Secondo me potrebbe fare del, del cinema, del movie star, could be. <laughs> I love film. I've done two films now. Then I did the Bohème film, film for video of Lord Espanol. And I've developed a taste for it. I'm not saying I'm going to become an actor and give up the opera, the live stage, which is what I really love. But I do like film. I do like acting. I've never done a role without singing. I would like to do one day an acting role. I would like to be given that chance. I came across the publicity machine during the Bohem film and kind of sparked a little bit in my head that I was becoming a little bit too much aggressive towards wanting recognition and publicity. And I was almost becoming bitter about it at one point until I realized when I was doing the film that it was killing my artistic side. It was killing my love for the music. It was happening because I was putting voice and art on the second side, and I was thinking, career, career. What's important is that I've done justice to my art, and I, that's what I started doing. And since I did that, I found a peace in my mind. I think it's 40, and I think he said it himself. It's really 40, it's French opera. I became a specialist a little bit in the French music 
and I grew to love the French music and realized that my voice went very well with the French repertoire. I still do a lot of French music and also like to do in recitals a lot of the French uh, composers. Gino and his affinity to French repertoire is fantastic and in, in fact he's searching to even perfect that even more but that doesn't take away that uh, he just made his first Verdi at Covent Garden and he's had the greatest review, you know, which I'm very proud of. <laughs> Sometimes I don't believe he's my son. I see him perform because I practically get moments where I admire him as a performer. And then I become his teacher again and I criticize, but that's normal. Gino understood the necessity to be a person, to be himself. We taught him, yes, but he's the one who puts it ahead. Everything comes from himself. I wish people would recognize me for who I am and what I've done. But it's true that my father had a lot to do with it. So I'm not bitter that people will compare because I'm so grateful to him. But at the same time, I know that I am the reason why I'm here. That's very dangerous, it's beautiful, but it's very You like very that, eh? You did it in one line. It's very nice, but that can be dangerous when you have... Yeah, I know it's nice for the bread. It's okay. I just wanted to show off. <laughs> My mother, yeah, she's always been the one to, to teach us everything about the, the operas, and, and she's always been generous in giving her time for that. You can take a little more time. No, no. Conductor will bit, accept bit, this. Bit, no, Conductor will accept. I'm sorry. I'm. No. Just a second. Try. Try. Yeah. 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 No. Just a second. No. I never have that big argument with my son. Luigi. With Louis? No. Oh, the point the is mother's always after, nice after with the, the son dog, and her husband. Know, but with the husband, she's more direct. Longer. With me, she's hard too like sometimes, it. but it's I'm still her little you boy. You have to get rid of the, you have to get rid of the air. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who told you it to me that you. way. That's years ago. Come on. Now you can do that. Okay. There's one regret in my life. She should have been the one to do the career because Lena had so much to offer it. But I guess she put in her mind that her two men were very important in her life. And that is a proof of great love and unselfishness. I'm not bitter, because I was part of his career, and it seemed my career kept on. But it's only when I play as a concert pianist that I'm a bit sad, because I love the public and to pay for the public that magic that excitement that you get it's um, it's missing I remember very well the first day I met Kathy I looked at her and I said Gino are you gonna marry this girl Gino said oh I, I cannot answer that that well, I says if you don't I says I'm gonna divorce I'm gonna marry her <laughs> it's, she's, a, she's a great girl, and she's a wonderful part of our family. We love her. There's a tremendous communication between Gino and her, because she's a musician. She knows about music. She's not as cultivated in the music as my wife was, but she tries, and she's uh, understanding for it. I'm not a concert pianist, but I've always loved music, and you know, studied, studied music in the university. And so I have often, um, you know, taken the score myself and learned it before, or most of it, just so that he has an advantage. Impressionato subito con suo con suo comportamento scenico, sembra che il palcoscenico è la sua casa, è libero e di giusti gesti ed è, è pieno del personaggio quale abbiamo interpretato adesso. Io parlo di Bohème. è stato ricevuto incredibilmente bene, amato molto, ma non, non potrebbero fare diversamente perché è molto, molto bravo, veramente molto bravo. 
in my dream there is always to find somebody like uh, like Gino, so sparkling, so young, so credible. And uh, here it is in this production. And I'm very happy. Penso che lui sarà un bravissimo cantante se va sulla strada seria e sono sicuro che lui farà la strada. Se è intelligente di stare in questo range per 10 anni, in 10 anni sarà un vero baritone e poi sarà probabilmente una delle grandi carriere di tutto il tempo. Gino's got the spontaneity of wanting to do things more than his father. Gino likes to race cars and maybe get drunk one night, and that's no good for the voice, but he'll do it. And maybe his performance might suffer, but he'll still be up there. People will accept because he's such a performer. I was used to the fast pace in life, Whereas now I've kind of slowed down, but then it catches up to me too, and then I want to move quickly too. But I found a lot of happiness now, or a lot of uh, pleasure in being alone and writing. It's a hard life. Your father, uh, being an opera singer, they're always gone. So when they're home, they want to take advantage of every moment they have to get it. When Gino is uh, home with the children, he, he is so wonderful as a father. I have my family and I like to spend time with my children when I can. And uh, that is difficult because I'm trying desperately to catch up to what the latest thing is happening in the development of the children. He gives 100% to his kids. He adores them and they know that. And they, they don't hold it against him when he's away, which is wonderful. Gino is much different than I am. Because for uh, me, uh, music was very important in my life. But Gino, music became even more important in his life. I believe that in the example of my father being, for me, I consider it ideal father. And I don't feel I'm quite the same. I'm better than many. <laughs> but, uh, um, but uh, just not as good as my father. I never tried to be bossy. I wanted to be more friend to my son. And I think if we have today a friendship we have, I think this is the best. He became with his son much more free, relaxed as two friends. Boss is a big baby. And Gino is the same. They're both two little boys. So that was beautiful because Louis was able to become a little boy, all the things he couldn't do with his father. He did transfer to Gino. I think Louis really likes very much now to work with Gino. They started this in 1980 with the Falstaff. It was really my first experience to be with Gino on television. In fact, Gino was practically his first experience on television. And we did the famous scene, the duet between Ford and Falstaff. He got out of it very beautifully, and it was maybe the second thing he ever did in his life with orchestra, and he was scared. It doesn't show, but Gino was still very young in those years. He was about uh, 23 years old. It was wonderful to be able to be next to him. And today, it's even getting even more closer because I'm an old sentimental. It's very rare to see a father and son that connect so well and uh, get frustrated. They have fights and they get tired of each other, just like anybody else. But there's a communication between the two of them through, I think, the singing. It's come about that you tend not to see in any other situation. I think that, pur essendo molto bravi tutti e due, credo che hanno due personalità diverse e ognuno dirà qualche cosa nella storia dell'opera, della musica e del teatro. E lui sa una sonorità spesso volte più drammatica. Well, I think the father has a more substantial voice in terms of Verdi voice. I think Gino is more sparkling artist. In certain way, Gino did not try to embrace my repertoire. And it was a salvation because people make association father and son, yes, but that's as far as it goes. It's two human beings.
The only thing we have together is got my name and I got his name. Because when you step on the stage of Vanity Theater, when you're a performer, you are by yourself. Daddy is not there to help you. My son is not there to help me. You're at the mercy of God. It's special for me to be with my father. I mean, to be home with my teacher, to be singing on the same stage and listening to his voice that I admired as a child. And more or less my idol when it comes to a baritone. This is the voice I always loved and wanted to sound like. I made God a liar. Happiness you found on it. I found an angel on it. It's my son. What I mean by this, it reminds me of my past. To be able to cherish this moment with him on the stage is one of the greatest things that can be given to me. I hope the day it comes that I have to be instinct. From this world, God makes me sit right next to him. That will be the greatest thing there is. You know, when I saw my son born, I didn't say, well, this one's going to be an opera singer. And I didn't dare to say, well, I will encounter my son at the Met. And all of a sudden it happened. Came the day of the performance. And it came at a point where I was not nervous, because I was shocked. I was scared for myself, because it was a new role. And to know that my son was there, he's an authority. He knows what I can do. If I don't do it, I don't live to his expectation. When we performed Mano at the Met, Gino came to me and he said, now look, just take care of my dad. And I said, okay, well, you know, I'm doing the title role and I'm singing for five acts, but yeah, I'll do it. And then Louis Kendrick said, now look, just take care of Gino, you know? I said, okay. <laughs> it was like the Quilicos together. They were just, they ta really take care of themselves and they really love each other. The actual day, that's when it started. <laughs> nervous wreck. My father being extremely nervous. My emotions were just like ready to crack. I was so close to tears. But we went out there and it was like the first time I ever sang in my life. When he sang at the mat, he took the mat, put it in his pocket and that was it. I expected it was going to be good, but I didn't expect that it was going to be that good. We had a great evening, so my memory from that is just really emotional. I mean, very, very, very emotional. I can't describe it. It's just too much. I won't talk about it. I don't want to cry. It's a dream. It is a dream. It became such a high peak of my entire life. It's, it's a great moment. It's an historic moment for us. It meant so much. It meant that I'm Canadian now, and I'm representing Canada. I'm representing the Canadian Music Council. Artist of the Year is a distinction awarded annually by the Canadian Music Council to recognize outstanding achievements by a Canadian performer during the preceding year. It's a great pleasure for me to present this award on behalf of the Canadian Music Council to this wonderful young baritone star of the world, Gino Quilico. I think this is a great talent. There's two things in my life that I felt not exactly as proud for myself as for my wife. The first one was the first time I sang at the Metropolitan and when I got the order for Canada. I was very happy when I got it because to be honored by your country, it doesn't happen all the time. It was given to me, but at the same time, it honored my wife. And she's more or less the responsible for it. It's funny to think about what is happening to you 
as you age, you always say to yourself, one of these days it has to stop. But last summer, I saw myself again on television, and I said, Louis, there is something you like a good wine. You're aging very well. My duty in life is to try to entertain people. And if I know I've succeeded, I've succeeded in my life completely in the satisfaction, not wanting more. I could die right now, and I, I feel that I had more than my share. Ciao, Luigi. Auguri. Tanti auguri.